yes welcome back to the next session of rehabilitation and retrofitting of structures course in the last session uh, we have been learned the non destructive testing techniques in those non destructive techniques uh, we have been uh, discussed or learned the two non destructive testing predominantly used that is surface hardness testing method or rebound hammer test and the next we have been uh, discussed or learned that is ultrasonic pulse velocity test okay so these are the two non destructive techniques or test methods or testing systems we have been learned in the non destructive okay so those two techniques are predominantly used in india so now let us move with the next non destructive testing techniques so that is the third one resonant frequency method okay the third one is resonant frequency method so let us know what is that this method is based upon the determination of the fundamental resonant frequency of vibration of a specimen i will repeat this method is based on the determination of fundamental resonant frequency of vibration of a specimen that means i am going to strike or i am going to hit that particular concrete specimen or the concrete specimen will get strike if that concrete get specimen get strike externally that is going to get vibrate so those vibrate will produce certain frequency so those frequency will be recorded so this is what the principle behind this resonant frequency test or method did you get my point fine so the equipment used uh, usually known as sonometer so this equipment here going to measure the frequency of the concrete specimen okay is sonometer and this this method can be used in laboratory so this is what the what i can say a limitation of this method the limitation of this method is we can use this particular method only in laboratory next the size of the specimen in which you are going to perform the test on the concrete specimen is 150 by 300 mm cylindrical specimen or 75 by 75 by 300 prism specimen that is height that is diameter multiply by the is height the 150 mm is the diameter and 300 mm is the height that is a cylindrical specimen or i can use 75 mm width okay and the 75 mm uh, what i can say the height okay and the length is 300 mm so this is what the specimen we are going to use in order to perform the resonant frequency testing techniques and uh, as i stated this is purely a laboratory method hence we are going to use this concrete specimen okay next why we need to or what we can uh, get from this test or what we can assess from this test okay the resonant frequency test is used for the following purpose number 1 for studying deterioration effects for studying deter that means whether there is an internal flaws internal cracks so all these things can be identified by calculating the frequency or by knowing the frequency is it clear next to study the effect due to acid and alkali reaction that means if the concrete is subjected to any acid reaction or any alkali attack on the concrete so those things can be assessed by this resonant frequency method that means you can notice the frequency increase or decrease next for determining the damage due to fire if there is any fire okay if that fire is going to damage the concrete or what is the extent of damage due to fire that can be determined using this resonant frequency method next to calculate the dynamic modulus of elasticity of a concrete so that is a one more thing we can uh, do from this particular thing and hope you know this uh, uh, from your uh, basic fundamental class there will be two modulus of elasticity of concrete you are going to calculate for a concrete one is static modulus of elasticity another one is dynamic modulus of elasticity i think in lower semester classes you people have been performed uh, 
the modulus of velocity experiment in your uh, basic material testing lab or material testing labs there you used to find out the modulus of velocity of a steel okay by plotting a graph of stress versus strain okay you used to calculate that modulus of elasticity that is Young's modulus of elasticity but in this okay and also coming to the concrete uh, by calculating the static modulus of elasticity you people know that you people know that coming to the modulus of elasticity the concrete will not follow the Hooke's law principle that means the stress is not proportional to the strain within the elastic limit because concrete is not elastic material okay so what or how we can assess the modulus of velocity that is static modulus of velocity or Young's modulus of velocity there I think you have been learned okay you are going to draw the tangent to the curve because whatever the uh, what I can say the you go, uh, the stress strain curve pattern you are going to get that will be that is or you can say load versus deformation graph the load versus deformation graph will not be linear in the case of concrete will not be linear in the case of concrete is it clear okay so hence we need to draw a tangent we need to draw a tangent okay so after drawing the tangent okay we used to calculate initial tangent modulus tangent modulus then secant modulus so we need to draw okay based upon the uh, the what i can say the ultimate point elastic point something like that so hence uh, the concrete modulus of velocity we used to calculate based upon the secant modulus of velocity that means uh, assessing the static modulus of velocity will be different quite different in the case of concrete compared to the steel i think that you have been learnt in your elementary classes okay so now this particular dynamic modulus of velocity you are going to measure by knowing the frequency by knowing the frequency once if you are going to uh, assess or calculate the frequency with respect to frequency we can calculate the dynamic modulus of elasticity next so this is what the equipment uh, we are going to use you can see here this is what the arrangements okay you can see this is what the sonometer or a, a measuring device to or to record the frequency okay and here you can see okay the transducers they have been attached okay okay and whatever the strike okay you, are, you can see the person is going to strike to that 150 mm diameter and 300 mm cylinder okay cylinder okay so you can see here the person is eating that okay this particular concrete cylinder and you can see whatever the vibration that is going to produce that will be travel through this solid material whatever the vibration that will be produced that will be travel through solid mid because we are going to assume that concrete is homogeneous and isotropic with that assumption we are going to calculate the frequency so this when you're going to strike the this cylinder with the device so then this particular vibration waves will be produced so those waves will be passed through this cylinder and those that will produce a frequency okay that will be recorded in this particular device so based upon that frequency we can know the deterioration or the flaws inside the concrete so likewise you can see the prism specimen prism specimen okay so as i stated we can perform for the cylindrical specimen and also for the this thing so this is what a sonometer what i have been told okay this is what a sonometer from this i can know the frequency okay so uh, this is regarding a resonant frequency method so now I want to show you some virtual video so that you can know more about this particular resonant frequency. Let us go ahead with this. You people can see here how exactly uh, the resonant frequency will be performed. Okay, this is a small video I've been uh, uh, showcased here you can see over there see here this is what a virtual video see this is what a concrete cylinder or a prism okay and this is what a hammer and this is what a recording device okay see here that's what they have been mentioning so machine vibrator impact okay and these are the specimen which I have been told that is cylindrical specimen and the prism specimen they are going to perform okay
next okay next we can see here okay the specimen is ready for the testing okay and they are inducing mechanical vibration and this is what the sensor attached to the cylinder okay in order to record the frequency okay and this hammer will be used or mechanical hammer will be used to create a vibration so accelerator sensors displacement okay see okay i am going to hit the hammer okay if the hammer is going to hit the vibration will be created and those vibration will be created okay produces the frequency and that will be recorded in this device so like this uh, they are going to and this is what the formula they are going to use to calculate the dynamic modulus of error that is 4 into n square that is frequency square into l square is the length of the specimen rho is the density of a concrete that's what see here n is the frequency recorded okay l is the length of the beam and the density from this we can know the compressive strength also so obtain dynamic modulus of elasticity okay corresponding to that okay you can see or you can measure the compressive strength so like this and we can relate to the strength of concrete also that means what i am trying to say here is we can relate the obtain dynamic modulus of elasticity from the graph because i have been showed uh, uh, showcased one particular graph over there okay so like this uh, we can perform the we can perform the test on the concrete so apart from noting down the frequency we can also measure the dynamic modulus of elasticity and from this dynamic modulus of elasticity we can correlate to the compressive strength of a concrete is it clear okay and these methods are laboratory test that is the limitation and uh, one more thing and uh, this particular test is not widely used in india okay let us move on to the next test that is dynamic or vibration method uh, i think this will be one and the same uh, like a resonant frequency with slight improvisation okay so these methods are important non destructive method this is the one more non destructive method used for testing concrete strength and other properties so once again as i stated we are assessing strength and quality okay so from the non destructive testing or destructive testing or semi destructive testing we are going to assess the quality and the strength so one test will uh, assess only quality one particular testing system will only assess strength but one uh, the advantage of uh, certain equipments are we can assess both quality and the strength okay next the fundamental principle of this method is in the propagation of sound velocity through a solid material that's what propagation that means i am going to create okay the so, okay that velocity that velocity okay whatever that is going to travel through a solid material will be calculated okay a mathematical relation could be established so from this equipment or principle we can establish a mathematical relationship that mathematical relation will be established between the velocity of the sound passes through the specimen and the resonant frequency recorded okay or frequency recorded okay velocity of the sound travel through the specimen and then while traveling okay the waves produce okay that also the from this specimen will also record the frequency so from the both velocity of a sound and the frequency from this relationship we can okay from these two things we can establish the mathematical relationship which i am going to show in the next slide from this relationship as i stated the modulus of that's what so we have been discussing the resonant frequency same like here also we can calculate the modulus of elasticity of a material next for deriving this mathematical relationship we need to assume that the concrete should be homogeneous it is isotropic and perfectly elastic so with these assumptions i need to calculate the modulus of elasticity is it clear see this is what the relationship i was used to tell see the velocity of the sound in a solid material is a function of square root of square root of okay the ratio of modulus of elasticity to the density i will repeat velocity of a sound in a solid material equal to okay square root is a function of square root of modulus of elasticity of a material to the density of a concrete okay and you can see the relationship here 
V is equal to F, that is the resonant frequency measured multiply by the G or the square root of G. Okay, the G is acceleration due to gravity and multiply by E is the modulus of velocity and rho is the density. So from this, I can calculate the velocity of a sound. Okay, now better the velocity, better the velocity, better will be the quality and I can say the strength of a concrete. Because uh, I have been discussed in the ultrasonic pulse velocity, they are also the same principle. Okay, I am going to place the two transducers over there, I may explain. So, by creating, that means by creating the electromagnetic waves to pass through the concrete specimen, okay, what will be the time taken by the waves to travel that particular length, okay, that is distance travelled. Okay, and then what will be the time taken by that waves to travel to from one end to other end. So, same here also I am going to do. Okay, so that means I am going to calculate the velocity. Okay, better the velocity, better will be the quality and the strength of a concrete. Did you get my point? Fine. So, this is regarding the another test. Next, uh, we will move on to the one more test that is pulse attenuation method. Okay. This is a wave propagation method once again in which the electromagnetic waves typically they are used to propagate the velocity of sound. Okay, here I am going to propagate the electromagnetic waves. Okay, typically in the frequency 500 megahertz to 1000 megahertz are allowed to propagate through solids. Did you get my point? So all these things are something like uh, ultrasonic pulse velocity, resonant frequency, pulse attenuation method or something uh, 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 slight variations will be there in the uh, testing systems but the mechanism are one and the same. Okay. <coughs> Next the methodology used for subsurface investigation. So this particular pulse attenuation is widely used in subsurface investigation in civil engineering structures and in particular for concrete structures. Okay. <coughs> Coming to the basic principles of this, the basic principle of this is attenuation properties, that is force properties of the electromagnetic waves are influenced by electrical properties of the solid material trusted. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. Okay. So, this whatever the electromagnetics that will travel through the concrete. So, that electromagnetic will influence on the electrical properties of the solid materials you are going to perform the test. <coughs> the dominant properties are electrical permittivity which determine the signal velocity and electrical conductivity. That means, uh, we are uh, uh, using different mechanisms okay, in order to uh, determine the quality and the strength of a material. That is what the difference between the uh, various testing systems. Okay, here you can see uh, the dominant properties that is electrical permittivity, uh, signal velocity and electrical conductivity. All those things you can determine in the concrete. Next, coming to the one more test that is pulse echo method. Okay, pulse echo method. So, what is the pulse echo method? Let us see this. So, this pulse echo technique was developed for pile integrity testing. So, this testing system is majorly developed to test the pile integrity system and now it is popular for concrete structure and structural elements. So, now it is been uh, using for a concrete structure and also for the other structural elements. This instrument is commercially known as, it has a commercial name, it is known as Doctor, D-O-C-T-E-R. Okay, it will be marked from the Denmark is available with a field computer related software and transducers. So, these are all the apparatus we are going to use for pulse echo method. Transducers to transmit those electromagnetic waves, okay, and the field computer rec to record that and the related software, okay, in order to interpret the results. This system found to be useful for our pulse echo method found to be useful for testing of thickness and flaws. What will be the internal flaws? what will be the depth of the flaw, okay, at what depth the flaw is located from the surface. So, those things I can do or assess from this. What is the depth of the flaw or internal flaw, I can assess from this pulse echo method. 
testing for wave speed on the surface what will be the wave speed on the surface that is also can be recorded next testing for depth of the surface opening cracks that's what i've been told okay what will be the depth of the crack in the internally located that also can be recorded so this is what the okay the apparatus you can see here here you can see i'm going to create a impact on the surface i'm going to create it may be mechanical way as i have showcased in the resonant frequency method mechanical vibration method or i can see or uh, create a machine vibration okay so mechanical vibration will be created and that the distance between the vibration to the transducers will be 150 plus or minus 10 millimeter so once i am going to impact on this surface it will create a electromagnetic waves so those electromagnetic waves will be sent to the transducers okay so these are the two transducers that will be located and these two transducers will be okay placed at a distance of 300 millimeter apart okay and whatever the impact that is going to produce or created by this particular mechanical vibration so those electromagnetic waves produced will be recorded okay by the transducers and then the transducers will send okay it will it will act like something like a sensors and those send those information okay the depth of cracks or internal flaws all those information okay through this and it will be recorded in the data acquisition system DAC okay DS okay so uh, that means the field computer or the data acquisition system okay from this I am going to record the whatever the data have been procured okay so see this is what the way they are going to perform you can see here okay so they have a field com field computer means it is a laptop okay they are going to carry a small laptop and you can see these are the transducers okay and uh, they are uh, performing the test okay the transducers sending the information to the data acquisition system okay and they are going to record it so like that they are going to perform the impact eco test they are going to create a impact okay those impact will generate the electromagnetic waves so the generated electromagnetic waves or vibrations will send a message to the transducers so those transducers send a message to the data acquisition system so like this uh, the system works okay so now i am going to show you the one more uh, virtual video of this test okay impact eco test or pulse eco test you can see so like this they are going to perform the pulse eco test you can see here so this will be used for locating cracking voids and delamination that is spalling okay see this is what internal flaws you can see those internal flaws will be sent to this and those internal flaws information will send to the surface level i am going to strike at the external surface see this is what the thing transducers okay data acquisition system and armor so once i'm going to create an impact those impact will be sent to this flash and those flaws information will be sent to the transducers and transducers sent to the data acquisition. see here okay the flaws okay this is what the flaw and the flaw will be that is you can see the frequency will be 1 to 60 kilohertz okay those internal flaws okay which is there in the concrete will be sent to the transducers so those transducers will receive that internal flaws information and that will be sent to the data acquisition system okay you can see here okay and this will create a what i can say the waveform the waveform generated will create the spectrum okay you can see the amplitude versus frequency it will calculate the frequency so like this uh, they are going to uh, perform the test So hope this uh, concept has been uh, clear, hope this concept is clear. So like this, uh, they are going to perform the uh, test, okay. So these are all the non-destructive testing systems, okay, that is which we have been discussed, that is uh, resonant frequency method, dynamic vibration method, pulse attenuation method, pulse echo method. So these are the different uh, methods. Uh, we are going to use in order to assess the performance in terms of quality and the strength of a concrete structure and all these uh, 
uh, testing system in which we have been discussed that is non-destructive system is not widely used in India. It is not widely used in India. Only uh, that is rebound diameter test and ultrasonic pulse velocity test. Okay. So now uh, you can start uh, thinking because I have posed one question on the initial class that is in the testing system. Now we have a different testing systems. I have discussed the destructive testing system. I have discussed next semi-destructive testing system. Next I have been discussed a non-destructive testing system. Now if I want to assess the performance of a concrete in terms of quality and the strength which is the reliable test which is the reliable test and accurate test okay in which you are going to get the realistic results okay because the realistic results will uh, depend upon your uh, why you require the realistic results because those results will directly affect the performance okay hence destructive testing system will give more accurate and reliable results okay that is the first thing 100% accuracy I can say okay next I can depend upon the semi-destructive testing especially core testing so this core testing is more re okay realistic okay compared to non-destructive because it is quite matching with destructive testing system I can say 90 to 100% accur accuracy is it clear next comes non-destructive testing so non-destructive testing system okay in which you are going to perform that is rebound diameter or ultra pulse velocity uh, these things will not produce so realistic results okay and we can I can say approximate results hence hence when you're going to perform any damage assessment or investigation depending upon the requirement or depending upon the situation we need to go ahead with the testing system because uh, while constructing we can go with the destructive testing system while doing the damage assessment we cannot go with the destructive testing we need to depend only upon the two testing system one is semi-destructive or non-destructive we you need to judge or decide which is realistic to perform in order to assess the performance of a concrete structure that is quality and the strength so that's why when you're going for the damage assessment you need to uh, uh, what i can say take care of all these things into account okay so you one, one time you require non-destructive testing, testing system and one time you require a semi-destructive testing system so it depends upon the situation okay so with these uh, what i can say it completes uh, this module number two okay so in this module number two, now you have been learned the damage assessment. So now I have explained, okay, the various causes that is in the module one and module three. In the module number two, we have we came to know what are all the techniques or testing system you are going to use in order to assess the damage or how to go ahead with the damage. Okay, all those things we have been discussed. Okay. So next we will move on to the medicines that is for, for this particular cause or damage which will be the best medicine. So that I am going to discuss in module number 4 and 5. Is it clear? So from this okay, discussion I am going to conclude this module number 2. Thank you.